Ecclesiastes 5 says, Never be rash with your mouth, nor let your heart be quick to utter a word before God, for God is in heaven, and you are upon the earth. Therefore, let your words be few. That does not describe the world we live in. Text messages and Twitter and Facebook and WhatsApp. We even have apps that take pictures that put words on the pictures so you can still use more words. We have journalists who don't have time to fact check and before they know it, the article is out. We have politicians who tell us all kinds of horrible things that we should be appalled at, drive them out with pitchforks and torches, but we just wait and soon enough their words fade away and we can't hear them above all the chatter that happens. My, Go ahead. Uh, my name I is, you, my name is There's nothing about I've you, that, you that, that makes anyone I've nervous. You're you know, losing so badly watching wanna, this. You don't know okay. what's happening. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen. Well, if I'm going to ask that my time not be deducted this. when you call it, you take control. Okay, now. The latest debate. Uh, well, gentlemen, hold on. Please. I'm going to get my answer. He doesn't get to We're, yell at the whole time. I want to move on. These are the rules. He can't move on. We're moving on. You know what? He interrupted the whole time. You'll have a chance. Wolf, do I? That's just what I'm saying. Suzanne. Sorry. Suzanne, she's touching me. I'm she's so touching me. Sorry. I don't have ketchup. But Donna, you know, why are you touching him? I just wanted to ask about what it. What is this? I'm, I'm trying to tell a story. I want bread. I read the newspaper this morning, and it was about a big turtle. I wanted to tell my story. I like turtles. I hate turtles. I like turtles. Sounds a lot like my children's sermon, doesn't it? Today's the day that we celebrate, that we remember this, this fuller revelation that God has given us in Jesus. Before Jesus came, we understood that there was a God above all gods, but we didn't understand how this God existed or who this God was. And so today we understand, through the revelation of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, this, this bigger, fuller understanding uh, that God is not only infinite, He's relational. Now God said to us, He said, I wouldn't burden you. In our reading, it said, I can't, I'm not going to tell you. There's, there's something I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to burden you with this information. And, and why he wouldn't or couldn't or shouldn't, we don't know. But what we do know is he's decided that instead of having knowledge, we are going to have a relationship. He understands that we are limited, that our understanding is limited, that we are limited beings. And maybe we can't handle the truth. Maybe we can't handle the fuller explanation. And if we look at how we handle the name of God today, OMG, we totally run it through the ground. So instead we have a relationship, which is much better. We have this relationship where we can call God our Father, which seems like so commonplace, our Father who art in heaven. But when Jesus said that, that our Father, that's like a daddy. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to work, and I want you to tell your boss, or your customers, or your clients, or your teachers, whoever that is. Go to your boss and say, hey, daddy. <laughs> Call him daddy all day. Uh-huh. Now, that might be awkward. None of y'all are going to do it. Why aren't you going to do it? It would be inappropriate? No, because you have a reasonable fear about how things should happen. And if you come up to your boss and you say, hey, daddy, whatever follows isn't going to go well. <laughs> so when we talk about God and we talk about fear of the Lord, why is it we get all bent out of shape? We have fear in a reasonable way, in a respectable way, in a way that we have relationships with people, human beings in our life. You know your boss your client, your customer, your patient, your guest, your teacher, you know that person way better than you know your Lord. Think about an aunt. An aunt knows you. You're walking on the sidewalk and there's an aunt and the aunt sees you. It moves to avoid you. It recognizes that you're a big thing in its life. 
that aunt knows more about you than you know about God. Because as little as that ant can perceive and understand about you, you are finite, and God is infinite. Which means even that small understanding that that ant has of you is still more than we have of God. So you have a much better and more in-depth understanding about the boss, the client, the patient, the customer, the teacher in your life than you do about God. And I'm going to ask you, and, and don't raise your hands or answer, but just think about this. Between your boss and your Lord, which one are you most likely to blow off? Now, which one's more powerful? Which one's more beneficial in the long run, in the short run? How does that make sense? I want to remind ourselves of what's going on today right now. We are worshiping a God that is above all other things. So when we say God above all God, we mean that God is not just the God above other gods. We mean Anything that would pretend to be a God. Life can sometimes pretend to be a God, by the way. In fact, that's the one that we tend to worship the most, life. If you put a hierarchy of things that are important, probably on the top of that list is life. What should you not do? You should not take someone's life, or you should protect life at, at high cost. But really, God is above even that. God is almighty, that means that he has the power over life and death. That there is nothing more powerful than God. That God created heaven and earth. That doesn't mean he just literally created heaven. He literally created earth. He created everything. This is like bookends that we're talking about. That we come here to this place at this time to encounter God. In a way that we would never encounter God in another way. And for some God-awful reason, and I mean that, God, full of all reason, He loves us. We're not Jews. We weren't born into His family. We were made a part of His family through baptism. Why did He do that? I don't know. Because He loves us. That's part of the revelation of who God is. Paul talks about it in Romans 5. He says, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God. Whew! Could you imagine having a problem with the Almighty? Do you think he would give half a second? Have you ever seen an ant on the counter in your kitchen and gone, How many times have you done that? And that relationship is nowhere near the relationship between God and us. Why would God regard us with love? But he has. He has justified us. We have made peace with him through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have attained access to this grace in which we stand. Well, there it is. It's grace. There's no reason we should be loved. He just does. Next time you see an ant, pick it up and walk it outside. So that we may boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Did you catch that? So that we may boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Did you catch that? The glory of God? The glory of God. The glory of the most almighty. The glory of the thing that created everything. The glory that is the most powerful being in the world. There is no glory greater than that glory. And not only is he not going to destroy us, he's going to let us share in that glory. Oh. What? How does that make sense? And at some point we have to recognize that doesn't make sense. That as much as we know about our God, we don't know Him. We don't know what motivates Him. Can you even hear the words coming out of my mouth? I keep calling Him a Him. He's not a Him. Our words fail us. We can't understand God. So at some point, we have to say, we don't understand the world. We don't understand why things are the way they are. We just have to say, God, not my way, but your way. Yours is the better way. I surrender myself to you. 
And that is going to sound weird, and it's going to feel weird, because as Americans, the last thing we do is surrender, but as Christians, it's the first. And I'm tempted at this moment to give you examples in my life how my surrender has gone well for for me or the people in my life, or to, to show you or tell you stories about people who have surrendered, who have gone out of their way, who have done things for God and how that has been a blessing to those people. Uh, But I don't want to do that. I don't want to create an argument to convince you that God is right. God is right. Whether you believe it or not, whether you want it or not, whether you care or not, God is right and He's given you salvation. God is right, and he's given you so much more. God is right, and we can share in that glory. And you don't need to understand any of this. Just merely receive it. And give thanks to God. Which is what we're doing today. Thanks be to God.